Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the channel. Happy Thursday, everybody. Hope your week and your day are going well so far. We've got a new day, which of course means a new NBA player prop video to share with you guys. I've got a good number of picks to hand out for you guys today that I'm really quite excited about. But first, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, drop a comment down below, all that good stuff. We just surpassed 60,000 subscribers this week. We are on the road to 100 thousand subscribers and with your help when you hit that subscribe button down below we'll get there just a little bit sooner all right guys real quick before we hop into today's video let's do a quick little recap of what happened with yesterday's slate we had a really good day on tuesday not so good on wednesday you see here our straight prop recap our first segment of the show we went one and three last night um clay thompson under 23 and a half points plus assist hit Luka Doncic over 44 and a half points plus assist was a miss and LeBron James over 34 and a half points plus assist was also a miss. The one that really really drove me wild was that first one you see there on top of the screen the Cade Cunningham over 22 and a half points that was a miss. Um I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant here because it it honestly really pissed me off. This is one of the things that I worry about with sports betting especially with the these sports book companies becoming so intertwined with the leagues themselves. You can't tell me that that wasn't fixed last night. Like, not to be that guy like, oh, I, I lost my prop, and now, you know, I'm going to cry about it, and I think the, re- the league's rigged because I lost. That was honestly, it felt like a, like it was a rigged spot. Now, you could, to play devil's advocate here, right, he did play 28 minutes. He did take 20 shots. He shot 8 for 20 from the floor. He finished with 19 points. The, to- the line was at 22 and a half. He needed 23. Realistically, he hits two more of those 20 shots that he took. He's at 23 points, and we're good to go. He played 28 minutes. It's not like he didn't play at all. So to play devil's advocate, he still should have covered. And I'm not making this as the excuse for why the prop lost, but it is kind of ridiculous that he sat the entire fourth quarter and a good chunk of the third. He sat the final 17 minutes of that game last night versus Toronto in a game that was close. It was close all the way to like the final th- four or three minutes of that game. It was absolutely asinine. The fact that the best player on the court on, I think both sides of that game in a close game and you sat him the rest of the game. He wasn't hurt unless there was an undisclosed injury, which is breaking the NBA rules of the injury report. Um, there's no injury. You're not resting him for the playoffs because guess what, Detroit? You fucking suck. So you're not going to the playoffs. So you're not resting him for the playoffs. You're not on a back-to-back. There's no reason why Cade Cunningham should have set the last 17 minutes of that game. Now, look, he could have played an extra five, six minutes. He still doesn't cash. That's whatever. It's just the fact that we were so close and the fact that you sit your star player for the last 17 minutes without an explanation. I saw some people on Twitter saying that it's because they let Sasser, who played 22 minutes last night, they wanted him to stay in the game and play. The dude shot four for 12. It's not like he played much better. So, really ridiculous that, that that's how that lost again to play devil's advocate. He did play 28 minutes. He did take 20 shots and shot 8 for 20 from the floor. He had a pretty bad shooting night. So, we still, in the 28 minutes that he played, should have cashed that line. He, fit, he had 16 points in the first half. He had just 3 in the second half. Just a really disappointing loss because that should have been a guaranteed hit. And you almost wonder, had he played in the fourth quarter, you got to assume he would have scored at least a few more points. Had he played five or six more minutes, he already taken 20 shots in 28 minutes. It's almost a shot per minute. So, again, yeah, my little rant there, it is what it is. But just a really frustrating thing when, like, there's nothing, like I said, there's no explanation. There's no injury. There's no need for rest. They're the worst team in the league. He should be playing 30-plus minutes. It just, it's just stupid. And then you look at our parlay recap here, kind of the same thing. Again, Cade Cunningham, we took the alternate line at 20.5 points. He finishes with 19. That's a miss. Nikola Jokic over 23.5 points was a miss. And then we took the alternate line, LeBron, over 29.5 points plus rebounds. That was a hit, but again, that's on the parlay. So overall... Not a great day for us, but you know what the best part is? we got a new day, a new slate of games, and a chance to bounce back. Let's not waste any more time, guys. Let's dive right in. All right, guys, starting off our first player prop of today's slate. This is the first segment. These are straight bets slash whatever the hell you want to do with them. Um, This is not the parlay segment that comes later in the show. Um, Our first prop here that I'm sharing with you guys today is in the Suns-Celtics game, which kicks off at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. We're going with Grayson Allen of the Phoenix Suns under 14.5 points plus assists. I'm going to go ahead and kick this over to the Outlier screen. Now, guys, you know what Outlier is? They are the best sports betting tool on the market. There is a special link in the description below and gives you a seven-day free trial to try it out for yourself. Outlier really is the best sports betting tool on the market, and I promise you guys you will not regret it. But here we go, guys. 
First prop of today's slate, we have that Grayson Allen under 14.5 points plus assists. You see here, we got this on DraftKings at minus 120, but it is available on BetMGM, Prize Picks, and Caesars. You look at the alternate lines, you can only go a little bit lower. You go to 13.5, which is a plus money play. I wouldn't recommend it. We're going with a 14.5 under here, which is really our only other option. Um, the data is not great, but not awful. He's covered this under in five of his last 10 games. You stretch that data to his last 20, 11 of his last 20 games, say 55% hit rate. And on the 2023 season as a whole, you'll see here a 49% hit rate. 29 out of 59 games this year, he has cashed this under. You look at the head-to-head data, though. The one time these guys played just last week on March 9th, uh, he only had 7 points and 2 assists versus Boston in 39.2 minutes. He played almost 40 minutes and had 7 points and 2 assists. That's what makes me super confident in this spot here. He plays 40 minutes and doesn't even hit 10 points plus assists. I feel pretty good about taking the 14.5 point plus assists under here. And look, it makes sense. The Boston Celtics look at the right side of the screen overall. Top five defensive team in the NBA in terms of points allowed and assists allowed in general. And versus the shooting guard position, the third best defense in the NBA in terms of points allowed and the number one defense in terms of assists allowed. This team does not give up really many points or assists to the guard position, even versus point guards a little bit better. But small forward shooting guards, which is where Grayson Allen kind of shifts between, um, they're pretty, pretty good. Also, there is another metric I wanted to show you guys here. One of the cool things about Outlier is that you can put specific filters to look for specific scenarios. And so right here, this is the data of uh, what Grayson Allen, what this line looks like when Durant, Beal, and Booker, their big three, um, all play. And you see here, when all three of them play with, and Grayson Allen also plays a 55% hit rate on the under 12 out of 22 games. But although the data may not look the best, look at who he cashes these overs against. Okay, we're going to go through them all here. On December 29th, he cashed versus the Hornets, one of the worst defensive teams in the NBA. On January 7th, he cashes versus Memphis, okay? None other, not very good defensive team because of all the injuries, okay? He cashes versus Portland on January 14th, again, not a very good defensive team. He cashes versus Sacramento, again, not a very good defensive team on the perimeter, okay? They cashes versus the Pelicans, now that's a good one, but it was a blowout, and that's kind of why maybe he got a little bit more work there, but that's the first one where you're like, okay, that's a good team. Then he cashes versus Indiana, one of the worst defensive teams in the NBA. Then he cashes versus Dallas, again, the one of the worst defensive teams in the perimeter in the NBA. He cashes it versus Atlanta, one of the worst defensive teams in the NBA. He cashes it versus Sacramento, again, one of the worst defensive perimeter teams. And then he cashes it versus Cleveland, which is a good matchup. So you look at the 10 times that he cashed the over when the big three plays, 10 out of those, I mean, 8 out of those 10 are against bad defensive teams. Only twice he's done against a team that you would call a competent defense. You're going up against the Boston Celtics, which is the best defensive team in the NBA or one of the best defensive teams in the NBA. I think this is a surefire hit. Grayson Allen, under 14.5 points plus assists. For the second player prop that I'm giving you two guys, you guys tonight, for tonight's slate, excuse me, is in the Wizards-Rockets game, which kicks off at 8 p.m. Eastern time. We're going with Kyle Kuzma of the Washington Wizards over 23.5 points. Now, look, as at first glance, this probably makes you guys a little bit nervous. A Wizards player against a Rockets team that's been pretty good defensively all year. I get it, but let's hold off for a second. I think you're going to like what I have to show you. This line is only available on prize picks and on DraftKings. And DraftKings, we're getting this at minus 130 odds. You could go up a little bit higher to, like, like let's say, 24 and a half, which is a plus money play. That's available on DraftKings and FanDuel. I personally recommend, if you can get it, get it at that to over 23 and a half point line. And at first glance, he's covered this in seven of his last 10 games, including four straight. You stretch that data to his last 20, 12 of his last 20 games, he's cashed this over as a 60% hit rate. On the 2023 season, it's not fantastic, a 44% hit rate, 28 out of 63 games. But again, over his last 20 games or so, he has been getting better. You see here, there's a couple of close misses, but overall, he's been pretty consistent. It makes sense. He's probably the Wizards' best player. I mean, I don't really know who else. It's definitely not Jordan Poole. Um, he's definitely probably their best offensive threat, so it makes sense. To, as to why he's been scoring a little bit more of late. Most importantly, look at the head-to-head match. The last time these two teams played on January 25th of last year. Now, this is a lot different. This is a year ago, so keep that in mind. But he did have 33 points the last time he played Houston. Now, all right, I showed you guys that information, but still, maybe you're not convinced, and I understand why. And you look at over here versus the defensive rankings, a little bit makes a little more sense. The Rockets on the year are a bottom six defensive team against the power forward position, giving up 26.5 points per game. When you pair that, with the fact that for the Rockets tonight, they are missing a couple of key guys to injury, right? No Tari Eason, no Shangoon, no Cam Whitmore. 
a lot of their key players, and especially Eason and Whitmore and Shangoon, who would probably directly impact Kuzma's ability to score, those guys being out is massive for us. Also, you add the fact that no Marvin Bagley, no Rashawn Holmes, no Isaiah Livers. Kyle Kuzma is going to have to play a ton of minutes in this game. I'm expecting him to play at least 33 to 34 minutes, maybe even more than that. He plays that many minutes against this Rockets defense again versus power forwards. They have not been great. Now you had all the injuries on top of it. I think Kuzma to score 24 points is not that hard of an ask. All right, guys, third player prop that I am sharing with you here today is in the Clippers-Bulls game, which kicks off at 8 p.m. Eastern time. We're going with Kawhi Leonard under 25 and a half points. Now, huge asterisks here before you guys jump into the comments and say, wait, he's probably not going to play. I understand that he's listed as questionable with back spasms, and there is a very high chance that, that Kawhi Leonard will not play. But what I'm telling you is, Whatever you're doing now, drop it when you're watching this video and go bet this line, okay? If he doesn't play, the, the sportsbook's just going to void the pick anyway. It's not going to be a loss because he doesn't play. They're going to void the pick if he doesn't play. Hop on this line now before sportsbooks start taking off. I've already seen some sportsbooks taking off, like points plus some of his combos. They're taking them off the sportsbooks, okay, because there's a belief that he may not play. If he doesn't play, the prop gets voided. It is what it is. But if he does play, he's dealing with back spasms. They're playing a Bulls team that's banged up. No Kobe White. No Lonzo Ball. We know how it goes. They've got a lot of key pieces. No, Z no Zach Levine. they got a ton of pieces out. Um, this is not a very good Bulls team. Now, defensively, they've been pretty solid all year long. You look over here the right side of the screen. The Bulls, they're actually about middle of the road, slightly top half of the league in terms of defense and points allowed. But... Um, with all their injuries and stuff, this game should probably be a blowout. The Clippers are six and a half point favorites, and this is the second lowest point total of the slate. Only two fourteen is the over under, so it's a pretty. They're not expecting this to be a high scoring affair. I just don't see Kawhi Leonard a playing a lot of minutes here because, especially if this game gets out of hand early, they could sit him with the back spasms. I don't think they're going to go ahead and throw him out and have him play thirty plus minutes against this Bulls team. Um, he the last game he played versus Minnesota, he only played. 12 minutes and he only played in the first quarter and then he was out so we're betting on the fact that if he plays he's gonna have back spasms you know I, I it's it's the Bulls are a solid defensive team look at versus small forwards they are actually top the top 12 in the NBA giving up just 20 points per game to opposing small forwards they're actually pretty good defensively um you mix that with it's a low point total he's banged up I just don't see Kawhi Leonard uh hitting this line and even overall in the year you look at the overall data 20, 2023, it's a 57% hit rate on this under, 33 out of 58 games. You look at the head-to-head -head data. Uh, the last time they played, which was March 9th, just last week, and he was healthy, he had 19 points and a 10-point win. So, I mean, the last two times he covered, but the one time they played this year, he had 19 points. Whether he's healthy or not, I think he would cash this anyways, but especially add the fact with the back spasms, this is such a great bet. It is at minus 140 odds. It is a DraftKings exclusive, but I'm telling you guys, hammer home this pick. I'm going to put like 1.4 units on this and bet it straight. I love this prop. All right, guys, comment 13 down below if you made it this far into the video because we're just about to hit the 13-minute mark. Fourth player prop I want to share with you guys here is another under. We're targeting the Bucks sixers game, which kicks off at 8 p.m. Eastern time. We're going with Tobias Harris of the Philadelphia 76ers under 20.5 points plus assists. Again, solid data here for Tobias. He's covered this in six of his last 10 games, a 60% hit rate. You look at his last game versus the Knicks. He played 26 and a half minutes. Now, it was a massive blowout, so they sat him early. But still, in 26 and a half minutes, he had two points and one assist. He has a couple games, good games here and there. But overall, it's not fantastic for Tobias. His last 20 games, 55% hit rate on the under. It's 11 out of 20 games. Um, on the 2023 season as a whole, a 53% hit rate, 31 out of 59 games. He has cashed this under. You look at the head-to-head -head data here versus Milwaukee. Four of his last five games, he has cashed this under, including the last time they played on February 25th, just a couple weeks ago. He had just eight points and no assists and a blowout loss for the Sixers. He only played, and he still played 31 minutes in that game. I like this spot a lot for Tobias Harris versus power forwards. The Milwaukee Bucks top 10 in points allowed and number two in assists allowed. They are one of the best defensive teams in the NBA against the power forward position here. Um, Tobias Harris, I just don't think he's going to put in a ton of work here. This game could get out of hand pretty fast. The Bucks are seven and a half point favorites here. They blew them out the last time they played on February 25th. This could be another blowout territory again. I just don't think Tobias Harris is going to be the guy who will do a lot of the scoring for Philly. Tyrus Maxey's playing, Buddy Heald's playing. They got the rest of their team. I know Embiid is still out and whatnot, uh, but I just don't think Tobias Harris is going to be the guy to burn the Bucks. So I really like this spot for the fourth prop of our slate. 
All right, guys, fifth and final prop of our slate here. This is going to be the riskiest pick I'm giving you guys. It is an alternate line of minus 155. Again, I know in the straight bet section, I try not to give you too many alternate lines, but I've given you this one. Chet Holmgren over 17.5 points plus assists for the Thunder against the Dallas Mavericks. Now, at first glance, the data is not going to be fantastic. He's covered this in six of his last 10 games. Not bad. You stretch that out to his last 20, 55% hit rate, 11 of his last 20 games. And on the 2023 season as a whole, a 63% hit rate, 41 out of 65 games this year. He has cashed this over. Now, the head-to-head data is not fantastic. In the two times he's played Dallas this year, he cashed the under both times. So why do I like this if he's cashed the under both times? And he did it pretty, pretty well, too. Um, it's just a matchup. The Dallas Mavericks on the scene, you look at the right side of the screen here, uh, versus centers. Now, it says versus centers are actually pretty good, but we have the data thanks to Fantasy Pros over the last seven games or so. Dallas is a bottom five defensive teams versus centers in both points and assists. Centers have been cashing the 17.5 point line versus Dallas consistently. The only guys who haven't, Al Horford, Nick Claxton, Isaiah Hartenstein, guys who are either not used to playing a lot of minutes or are not really great offensive players, someone like Nick Claxton who's not really known for his offensive prowess, right? I think that this is a pretty good line. I know he hasn't cashed it the two times they played. I think he's going to cash it. They've been pretty bad against centers of late centers have been able to go off on them. It's risky. You guys want to fade it? Absolutely. You have the right to fade me. That's why I give these picks. You can either fade me or ride with me, but I'm going to take the over here for Chet Holmgren over 17 and a half points plus assists. All right, guys. So that is it for the first segment of our show. Now quickly, let's go ahead and roll over to the player prop parlay section of today's video. I know this is the first week of the new format, so once again, I'll explain it. The first segment are just straight props. Do with what you want with them. You can either straight bet them, throw in a parlay of your own, whatever. I guess you could still do that with these props too, technically. But this is the parlay that the intention is here. You're going to take this parlay and ride it with them. So I got a, a little parlay for you guys today to share, and we're going to try to go through this as quick. I know this video is already over 16 minutes. But I got to give you guys that data. You guys need the information. However long it takes, that's how we do it. I actually have a four-leg parlay for plus 651 odds, a really high-odd parlay to give you guys today. And just a little reminder, tomorrow we will still do our Freaky Friday five-leg parlay as normal. All right, let's go ahead and get started here with our parlay. The first leg of our four-leg parlay, we're going back to the Sun Celtics game. We're going to be targeting Kevin Durant over 29.5 points plus assists. Going to go back to the outlier screen here, guys. And, uh, yeah, over 29.5 points plus this is an alternate line. Minus 165 on DraftKings. You can get it on Caesars also at minus 215. He's cashed this in seven of his last 10 games. You look at his last 20 games, 65% hit rate, 13 of his last 20 games. He's cashed this over. And on the 2023 season as a whole, a whopping 72% hit rate, 42 out of 58 games. He's cashed this over. And you look at the head-to-head data the last time these two teams played. On March 9th, just recently, he had 45 points and six assists. Absolutely crushed this line. I don't know if he'll have that good of a game again this time around, but I do believe that Kevin Durant uh, will have another big game again, a 72% hit rate on the year. That is the first leg of our four-leg parlay. All right, second leg of the parlay, guys. I'm not going to go into it because I already just did a whole segment on it. It's that Kawhi Leonard under 25 and a half points prop. Again, if it gets voided out of the prop, it's not a big deal. Um, we're going to take it here, though, under 25 and a half points. Um, I just think it's too good of a line to pass up. So hop on it while you can. If it gets voided, it turns into a three-leg parlay. The odds are still pretty decent on it. But we'll take this Kawhi Leonard as the second leg of our four-leg parlay. All right, guys, third leg of our four-leg parlay. Again, saving us a little bit of time here on this longer video. We're using yet another exact same prop that I gave you guys in our straight prop segment. We're going to go with this Tobias Harris under 20 and a half points plus assist line. Again, Milwaukee defensively, they're not the best team in the league, but versus power forwards, they are pretty good. I just don't think Tobias Harris is going to have that big of a game against Milwaukee. Whether it be against Giannis or Brooke Lopez or Bobby Porters or whoever, I just don't think Tobias Harris is going to be able to offensively dominate any of those three guys that I just mentioned. Uh, you see here their weak, po- their weak spots versus centers, so if Embiid was playing here, and B would be a good spot to bet, but versus power forwards, not very good. Small forwards are also pretty good in terms of points allowed defensively, top 10 in the league. So I really like the spot here for Tobias Harris, this, other, this under. Um, I think it's a really great pick to bet straight, to put in a parlay, whatever the case may be. I'm throwing it in here as the third leg of our four-leg parlay. All right, guys, fourth and final leg of the parlay. Don't turn the video off. Don't turn it off. I know, I know, I know. We're going with Josh Giddy. Over 9.5 points versus the Dallas Mavericks. Going back to that Mavericks-Thunder game. I'm taking Josh Giddy off the no-bet list one more time. If he fails, he'll be going on the no-bet list and probably indefinitely. Um, I'm taking him off the no-bet list here because he has been covering this line consistently. 
Eight of his last 10 games, he's cashed this over. You stretch that data out to his last 20, 70% hit rate, 14 of his last 20 games, he's cashed this over. You look at the 2023 season as a whole, I know he hasn't been fun to bet on this year, but 64% hit rate, 41 out of 64 games, he has cashed this over. And you look at the head-to-head data here, again, each of the last four times he's faced off with the Dallas Mavericks, including the two times they played this year, he's cashed the over. Not great, not convincingly, right? 14 points, 10 points, 10 points, 11 points, but he still hits this line. It is an alternate line. I got this at minus 205 on DraftKings. It's also available on FanDuel, Prize Picks, and Caesars. I would not go literally any higher than this. Stick to 9.5 points. Um, the Dallas Mavericks defensively are a bottom six team in the league versus shooting guards, giving up 29 points per game, one of the worst defensive teams on the perimeter versus shooting guards. I just think Josh Giddy is going to be able to get 10 points on this Mavs defense here. It's got a pretty high, the highest point total of today's NBA slate is in this Thunder Mavs game. They're expecting some points here. Luka, he's been on a tear lately, but you look at the injury report. He is a game time decision with some hamstring soreness. I do think Josh Giddy will get a good amount of uh, playing time. And then, you know, against with Luka Doncic possibly being out here defensively, they're not good with Luka to begin with. Without Luka, how is that going to look? Um, so I know it's risky. I know people, they see Josh Giddy, you want to turn the video off. But I do like the spot for the fourth and final leg of today's parlay. All right, guys, there's our four-leg ticket. Quick recap. Tobias Harris, under 20.5 points plus assists. Kawhi Leonard, under 25.5 points. Kevin Durant, over 29.5 points plus assists. And Josh Giddy, over 9.5 points. You parlay all four of those legs together. You get a parlay of plus 651 odds. Not too shabby at all. Guys, that is it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. As always, make sure... Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. I will be back tomorrow. We've got our Freaky Friday five-leg parlay tomorrow. That's not going away with the format change. Really excited to look and looking forward to that. But, guys, thank you very much, as always, for watching and supporting the community. I will see you all tomorrow. And until then, I hope we're all winners.